Welcome to Whiskey Wednesday, where we drink the finest whiskey and we show you our EDC stuff. Yeah, today we are going <laughs> to be talking about some of the internet's most important things. And what doesn't the internet want to know more than what we carry with us every day? The internet's yeah. dying to know exactly what you have in your pants. In our pants. Yeah. We're going to show you what's in our pants today. But uh, first, as usual, yeah, we're going to we drink. talk about some whiskey real quick. So uh, these we just got from Aaron at uh, Last Cut Crystal. These yeah. are some Glencairn glasses. Some of you guys have been, have been mentioning in the comments uh, in, in past episodes about how we should try some Glencairn glasses. Aaron was kind enough to, to send these to us. He's he, a bro. He hand cuts. The design of these, these are a rye. And they're gorgeous. Uh, this is his rye design. Yeah, they're beautiful. So because it's a rye design, I figured we should drink a rye whiskey. I have some questions first. So I don't know if you guys know this. So I've only ever drank out of these once before. I'm looking for like proper etiquette here. So do you like, do you hold the glass like this or? Pinky's out. This? I mean. I, I, it's such a small glass. I can literally wrap my whole hand around it. So the thing that that I like about a Glencairn. Well, so let's talk real quick about Glencairn glasses. Yeah. So what what these do over a, over a rocks glass, right? Like a well, kind of what we Our usually use. glass, yeah. Is you can see here they obviously they uh, they're kind of tulip shaped and they come up to a much smaller diameter at the top. And what this does is this this helps direct the aroma mm. straight in your nose, right? Like it's it is literally a funnel. I, I've got a good size. Smells. I got a good size honker here. It my nose fills. Is it supposed to smash into your nose when you drink out of it? I mean, it's just it's just it's that's a, the it, idea, right? So okay. W we all know when you taste things, you mm -hmm. use smell to taste things. So the more that this can funnel the smell, the smell, the aroma into your nose, the better things are going to taste. That's why a lot, a lot of people swear by these because. Well, they say that the whiskey tastes better. That makes a lot of sense. That way. The other thing this does is it, uh, it, it kind of encourages, you know, the swirling, opening up the, the flavors and the aroma. Oh, so you, you know, should be doing this. I, I feel like last episode I, I started talking about, what was I talking about last, last episode? What was I talking about last episode where I started to sound super nerdy? Oh, I think I was talking about. I do remember about, this. I don't um, know what you're talking about. About what's it called when you open up a bottle and let it breathe. Oh, the like neck that. pour versus. Well, you know, there's a, it, it's a wine term where you open Panics? up a bottle of wine and you let it and you let it air, air yeah. out. I can't uh, think. Aerator. Of I'll, I'll put the word down here though that I'm thinking about. So, this th these glasses also kind of they make it easier to swirl around because you don't have to worry about it, you know, coming out the top like a, like in a rocks glass. Downside to a Glencairn is getting ice in there. It's not really made to put ice in it. It's not, so okay, you're not supposed to drink it. Yeah, you're supposed to drink it neat, right? Yeah, which saying? I ninety five percent of the time drink it neat anyway. So if it's a higher proof, I do like it cut with an ice cube or two. And we've so this is only this is hundred proof. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is the Angel's Envy Rye. We've we did a past episode about Angel's Envy, so I'm not going to get too deep into. I do think into the story in the episode you wanted to try the rye. I think I did. I think we did, yeah. but then I think the episode was kind of messed up because I remember us pouring this at some point in time together. We have not poured the rye. Have not poured the rye? No, we have poured the regular, not the rye. No, I think we've drank this here. Yeah. Not on, not on Whiskey Wednesday, so. All right, so we're supposed to do this. Swirl. That's what I was told. Swirl, yeah. You, you can, can get some serious swirls some going serious here. serious swirl going. Like I can almost, Put all the stuff on the glass wall. It's so, <laughs> so <we're just, laughs> comes splashing out. But man. Oh yeah, you do it, get a lot more you smell. You get a nose full of aroma. Yeah, it's like high velocity aroma right into your nasal passages. And this, this really has a really nice aroma to it. Yeah, that's this pretty is, good. This is good. I, th this it's one of my a favorite rye. Rise. Super easy to drink. I mean, for me, 100 proof is like perfect. And this is in in uh, Angel's Envy fashion. They finish this. It's it's aged in white oak barrels, but then they move it to this is in Caribbean rum casks. So you get hmm. a little bit of sweetness from the rum from the rum. 
I like this glass because it makes the whiskey smell better. Like it actually increases and, the smell. And 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 with that increases taste to it. I, I think it. That's still I, on I debate get, for me personally. I'm really, trying to figure that out. So I definitely think it helps. What I'd like to do side by side blind comparison, right? I don't know how I would do that because yeah, no, I would know. You would know. You just have to touch my nose while you pour the other glass in, so I don't know. This, you can't not smell it. It when, definitely when, smells. When you're drinking out of, yeah. out of one of these. And scientifically, we know that f that aroma has to do with taste. Okay, everybody, so, we're breaking out the science textbooks now. Science. Science time. Science. science. Bill Nye, the science guy. <laughs> yeah. These are, these are beautiful. They're great. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Do they come normally with this like nice cut on the no, bottom? No, I think I think Aaron puts. That puts looks those good. On there. I think it really. What I think is cool about these two is you can look through them, and you can read the yeah, Glencairn glass. The bottom glass. say the yeah. But it's inverted, so you see it through the bottom. I think that's cool. Yeah. This is really good. That's, that's, so what are we doing today? Good. So today we're going to be talking about our EDC. Nice. We, we've not done, we've not done this before. It's been a long time since since I've done a. You know, pocket dump Greg's EDC type of thing, and so I figured this this would be a good opportunity for us to show what we carry. Now, before we brought this in, we removed all ammunition from the room. Yeah. Unload showed clear. We both checked each other's guns. Slides are back, so we are good to go. No desk pops here. So uh, there. So yeah. let's. So we want to start with the blaster. Of course. Now everybody wants to know. So I actually. I only have two handguns, because that's what I have. Um, this is one of them, and it's got a beautiful American flag paint job on it. It's a Glock 19, and... Gen, uh, what gen is it? Gen 4. Gen 4. four. Okay. Yeah, because it's got the big slide release. Uh, yeah, uh, mag, mag release. So, gen, it's pretty much stock. I put some night sights on it, and I put an extended uh, slide release on it, and that's it. So I've done to it. No I replaced, anything to it. Just replaced the spring like a yeah, little while ago. A, yeah, which you probably had a lot through it. Had a lot of yeah. it. And it, well, it was not that. having any issues, but I don't know. Someone said I should replace the spring. So I was like, well, they're like 10 bucks. So you've yeah. had that Glock as long as I've known you. That's, I, so yeah, this Glock has been around for a very long time. Yeah. And the only thing it's missing is a red dot. Yeah. I, I, I know you've been toying with it. I've that. been toying with it. Uh, the, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good gun. I, don't know. It always goes bang. It always goes bang. I, Which is what you want. I can count the number of failures. At least uh, to, with two hands, yeah. probably. And most of those are probably ammo. Yeah, or I, me. I, I, I know you were having an issue with a spring or something. At some point in time, but we fixed but, it just But you can put it in a spring and you're good to go. Yeah. Uh, so I've been carrying a SIG P365 XL with a Holosun 507K. I do have a tactical triggers trigger in this. Other than that, it is completely stock. And I've been carrying this for, what, probably three years now or it's so? It's been a, yeah, because didn't you have a 365 before that? I didn't. No, I was, what was, I was the... holding out for, I was holding out for, for a long slide version. So, okay. what I like about, what, what I love about this gun, it is only an inch wide, which is kind of the whole P365 design. Yeah. The mastermind engineers over there figured out how to get 15 rounds of ammo in a mag, in a, in a very small mag. The flush mag in this carries 12. Uh, the ex extended carries 15. You had a shield before that, didn't you? I had a shield a long time ago. That's it, yeah. Uh, the gun that I was carrying before this was actually CZ P10C. That's, That's right. right. That was my, my daily that. carry before this. Yeah. And once it came out with the XL, I snatched it up. I'm like, that's exactly what I want. I wanted something with a longer slide because it helps. It helps with two things. Yep. One, it helps your it helps your grip, and also the the, the grip length on this was, was longer than, than a regular three six five. I can get all my fingers on the grip of this. The slide is long enough that I can get a normal grip on. I grip this gun the same way I would grip a Glock nineteen or seventeen or something. Yeah. And it also helps with carrying. Uh, you know, think of a a the rudder on a boat. You know the 
deeper the, the bow is on a, I think it's bow, right? The underside of a boat. I'm not going to pretend to know. <laughs> the deeper the, the, the boat goes down in the water, the more yeah. stable it is. And, 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 and a gun is in a similar way, when, when you're carrying it, the, the longer the slide is, the more stable it's going to be. That to is true, it. for sure. So, I absolutely love this gun. It is a fantastic gun. The, the 365 X Macro just came out, and I'm intrigued. What I'm is not, the difference? Do you know? I'm not totally sold on that. Um, I think I'm. I th think I might pick one up. Let, let, let's. We'll, we'll save that for another. Let, we'll, we'll stick with our ADC. Mm -hmm. But uh, that may be coming in, in, in another video. Okay. Because I've been carrying this for years. I love this gun. I'm thinking about picking up the X Macro, and see what I think about that. It, it carries more ammo. Just, just real quick. Uh, Seventeen plus one. Ah. It's, so they made the bullets smaller. Just put them all in the same. Well, the bullets the same size. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like now you just pour, you just pour you them just in pour there. Just pour them into the mag. Uh, it actually has a real uh, pick rail oh, on, the, cool. on the bottom of line like instead of this, this thing. And it wow. has a integral comp, right? comp in it, which is... I think I saw that, yeah. Which is pretty neat. So anyway, I'm, we're, we're going to get too deep on it. All right, let's go to the next thing. So the next thing that what's our yeah. gun to go so, into so, yeah. are holsters. So I have here a TXC holster. That's a great holster. I can't remember what model. That's the X1 Pro, I think. Something like that. Yeah. What I love about this holster, one, it's it's made very well. All the all the edges are really nice and cleaned up. Mm-hmm. Um, they've got this slot in there for. I think it's for an alternate mounting position. Maybe. That's what I, I think it is. But there, they also have vents in the back yeah, on the, your wedge. Yeah. So, excuse me. So, so, yeah, so some of the features I love about this holster are this bump out on the back is, and so some, some people will, will add a pad to the back of a holster to help it kick, kick out. Otherwise, this wants to go up against your body and stick out. So they put this, they mold this in so it kicks the holster back into your body. The helix is what they call this. It's a CNC machined aluminum thing. So instead of a wing, yep. they use this. And it actually cans it in two directions. It cans it back into you, but then it also cans it back into you in this, yeah. this axis. Yeah, so in this axis and in this so, axis. I really like this holster. So I also love that holster and I have one as well. Um, this is a and r Designs holster. He's made us a custom holster with the Alias logo all over it, which is pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. And so, what I like about Alex's holsters, because this is the owner, he does a really good job of all the finishes. All the edges are nice. Yeah. Definitely. But the overall holster design is simple and it's effective. And that's, I mean, I don't need a ton of bells and whistles all the time. He's got a claw on it, which I think is a standard. Most people always want a claw. His claw is low enough that I don't hit my knuckles on it. That's another big thing for me, is that sometimes I feel like the claws are just a little too high, and when I go to grab the gun, I bring my hands in, I end up hitting my knuckles on it. So it's got the right height there. It's a, a foamy style clip, but we put a top mount, an, yeah, an alias top to, mount. I forgot to mention, obviously, I have the alias bottom mount. This Heck yeah. clip is what this is. So we'll talk about the alias in a little yeah. bit more here. So I have that on there, and I just love how I'm always about making my everyday carry a little simpler and easier to utilize. And so I love that I could just, you know, the gun goes right into here and then this just snaps right into my pants. I have no like moving my pants around to get it in there. It's just, it just snaps right in. So I don't have to deal with getting stuff out of the way. I love that. Um, and I haven't had that experience with every holster. So that's been a big thing for me. So simplicity was my run for that. Yeah, those are two great. I, I have some inner holsters and they're all great as well. Yeah. Um, we have hundreds yeah. of holsters. Yes. Well, Sorry. maybe not hundreds. Dozens. Dozens for sure. Fifties <laughs> is probably. Each of us yeah. so, uh, Maybe we do, yeah. All right, um, let's, let's, so, let's, so we were talking about the alias. Yeah. Let's go ahead and talk about our chosen belts. I have been carrying a Core Essentials belt. I've been using this for probably about a year now. And so I started really using this a lot when we were working, when we were in the, in the middle of, of working in R&D on the alias mm -hmm. system. Uh, what I love about this belt is that it ratchets. It's open-ended. I love it, just an open-ended belt. This goes through 
my my loops easy. It ratchets like you can hear that. So I have a lot of adjustability. When I'm when I sit down in my car and I want to loosen up, I just hit this little button. It opens up a little bit. When I stand back up, I can go whoop. I can I can tighten a little bit. Yeah, tighten everything up. It also makes putting my alias receiver on the belt really easy. So uh, the receivers well fit through belt loops, but why feed it through belt loops when I can just put my belt on and then slide this on and then do that. So I, uh, we've done a whole video, I'll, I'll link it down below. We've done a whole video reviewing the Core Essentials belt where you can find out more about it, but this has been my- Can I just say, it's pretty amazing that belt still looks brand new. Yeah. Well, I just I'll, noticed that. I'll be fair. I don't wear the Tane one very often. Okay. I was like, that looks brand new. <laughs> but I'll be honest, my the black one that I wear every day yeah. doesn't look a whole lot different. It's still... It's, it's super it's impressive looks, to me. A year. Yeah. yeah. So I also have a belt and sometimes I wear it. Um, and so most people put their belt on like this. I put my belt on like this. I flip it upside down. This is a blue alpha belt. And I love this. It's got like, what do they call it? It's the Cobra buckle. Mm -hmm. It's got like the, it's like a mini Cobra mini buckle. Cobra buckle. So this will actually fit through your belt loop. It goes through my belt loops really well. Uh, I only have one pair of shorts that this is a little tight in, but I can still get it through. And I love that click. I size this perfectly for my waist. As you can see, I'm not a circular person, but I'm an oval person and this belt is a little more flexible and that I like. So the reason why I put my belt upside down instead of putting it on the way that everyone else does, like this, is so that I don't have to feed my receiver through. Even though I can, I like to just feed the other end of this through. So I put it on like this. Well, actually, like this. You make that sound when you put it on too? Most, most days. Some days I don't, yeah. So but I think you put... Okay, yeah, so I, I go from the left. Yeah, I go from, I go, use my left hand to feed it into feed, my right. You feed it there, okay, gotcha. And, and the re reason why I do that is simply so that I don't have sense. to remove my receiver. And there is, you know. No, I could do that too. I mean, I could, so could. here's one of the other handy, dandy things about core. I can go like I love this, that they do this. And the buckle comes off. Yeah. So I could. You could potentially could do that. the receiver. The reason why you decided you didn't like it was because you don't like the toggle on top, right? Isn't that what you said? Oh, no, I, uh, the, no, you, that being top. Yeah. And that's what you didn't yeah, like. That would be on top. Which, I don't know, is a problem. Which when I use my core belt, I do it that way as well. And I just leave my receivers on and never take them off. I might try that. And I have to, so one thing different about us, Greg likes his receiver a little bit looser, so he can kind of adjust it to where he wants his gun to sit. And my receiver is a part of my belt. Like I can move my belt around. I just clamp it down. I even put like a wedge underneath it, behind it with a dot, like a rubber dot we use for our, uh, Neomags, because I did not want this thing moving, and it does a little bit now. Cause, it slides as much as it does. But I don't like it that way. I like it mounted perfectly, but we keep taking it off for filming, <laughs> and it, I have to deal with that. So the perks of the job is that I get this perfectly set up, and then I have to remove it every once in a while. But that's my, that's my belt. I love it. The other no, thing I use you're not wearing a belt. mostly half the time, honestly, anymore, I wear this about four or five days out of the week, and then I wear this the other and maybe that's th three or four days. I wear this the other three or four days because it is so unbelievably easy for me to pop this in my pants, put my gun in there. And like I said, I'm all about using it. So this, this, is our, this is our new alias beltless receiver. Yep. And it is, it's super handy just to pop, pop it in. belt line and clip them down and you're good yep. to go. Yep. And uh, I, I, I don't have mine today. 95% of the time I'm wearing a belt. But every now and then, especially in the summer when I'm just hanging around the house wearing board shorts and my wife asks me to go get milk. Do you also wear I'll that? Just, I'll, I'll grab the belt list and so, clip it on and run to the store. Super I, nice. I go three places in my life, and that's home, here, I rent the property. And so what I like to have is the ability to remove, like I put on a coverall. It's just nice to be able to take this and this, click them together, I throw this in my glove box, and I have my gun with me whenever I need it. If I'm gonna go into the store, or I'm gonna um, go visit a friend. I have it all ready there, but I don't have to carry a belt. And some of my pants, you know, throw on gym shorts to work in the house. I don't have a belt. So it makes things a little uh, tricky for me at times. And this simplifies my life greatly. And that's why I love it. Yeah. All right, next. Uh, how about knives? Sure. I love knives and I used to collect, I don't really collect knives anymore, but I still have a lot of knives. 
so I do change around. I, I could do a whole episode just on just on knives, but the one I've been carrying a lot lately, this is by Andre De Villers. Uh, is his name? Uh, I can't Tactical. I can't remember this, the company name. Sorry, Andre. Uh, but I had Andre make this for me probably three, four years ago. Yeah. Because I wanted one that was black and red because I love black and red. And I love this knife. It's a perfect perfect size. It's a liner. Uh, it's a frame lock. And it's very sturdy. It's, I only got sharpened this in three years. And I'm not... You utilize it, too. Yeah, I use it a lot. It's too fuzzy. It's, it's like, dirty. Yeah. And so a good knife. Oh, one, one of the things I love about about this knife that Andre did is he actually put a roller in the tip of the clip there. It's such an unnecessarily beautiful detail. So you're not, yeah, so when you put this over your pants, yeah. that actually just rolls over. It's beautiful. It's not, it doesn't tear up your. Yeah, not, your not, no one takes the extra time yeah, to, put a, to do that. Put a tiny roller in there. But I think that it has like some awesome. really good function to it. But that's the kind of thing that you get with a custom knife. And honestly, I don't think it was stupid expensive. No, you it's bought that. It's been a long time. I want to say it was too. celebrate moving into the new sh shop back when- The last new shop. The new shop was the last new shop, and it was one room in his backyard. <laughs> but it was a big celebration at yep. that time. Yeah, so that was, that was my gift to that myself. That was his gift to himself. Yeah. I bought this because I had 200 bucks, and I was like, I want a knife. And it's a Spyderco. I think it's the pair of three? Yeah, that's a pair of three. Isn't it? Pair of three, which is like the pair of two, but just like 20% smaller. smaller. So it actually fits in your hand. Yeah, Spyderco makes a great knife. I can't complain about anything about this knife. I, it, it's a knife. There's, I love it, it works, it's easy to open, it's easy to close. I do love that it has a, I think this is actually a liner lock. Yeah, it's like a reverse liner lock. Reverse, it's a rear Which liner lock. Which is genius lock. to put it at the back of the knife, not, and not where, where it closes. I love but that I, feature. So the, the, first, the first knife over $100 I ever bought was a, was a Spyderco Pair 2. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it was the knife that tipped me over the edge. It was camo, wasn't to it? Start buying the digital yeah, camo. Yeah, yeah, the scales like a digital camo. Yeah. Uh, it was a knife that tipped me over the edge to start spending real money on real knives. As soon as you get a real, real knife with good blade steel, I think this is S35. No, S30V. You know, so once you get into like a good, good, uh, mm -hmm. good blade steel, you realize how much longer it lasts forever. It the lasts, sharp ass. and it's still not so hard that. That you have to pay somebody else to do it. I can try. There's a myself. bunch of ways. I used to know a bunch of ways to. to open yeah, you these. can thumb, pinky open. Yeah. You can middle finger open, first finger Fantastic open. Fantastic knife. Yeah. And then the other knife that sometimes I carry. It's actually a box cutter. Um, I love a, box cutter knives. It's a I fancy have box cutter knife. I have a fancy box cutter knife. Uh, too. Black Fox Machine Company on Instagram makes them, and I got one that's all brass. It's beautiful. But I found this in my glove box today. And I was like, I'm gonna carry it. So. I thought of it last night during my the dream. The beautiful thing about box cutter knives is you don't care what you do to them. Like, <laughs> I, I kind of baby this a little bit. Yeah, you don't want to like cut staples with it or something. Yeah, but my box cutter knife. No, nope, don't, don't care. I don't care. Flick the blade out, pop a pop new one in, or flip it over. They're pretty cool. Uh, uh, I don't yeah. see you with one. I do, actually. I when just, I carry. It's on my loaded mag over there. <laughs> when I carry a spare magazine, yeah, I guess. So I lied. We do, we do have some ammo in the room, so I didn't. Okay. It's way over there. So, uh, <laughs> but I carry a spare magazine in a Neomag, of course. This is the 15 rounder, and yeah. I use a medium extended clip Neomag. It's just one of our standard Neomags. So I bought this Neomag before I started working at Neomag, and I'm proud of that. That means I didn't build it, which is also quite nice. Yeah, I did. Um, and it's a blue anodized, which we don't do anodizing anymore because mm -hmm. we just got so busy, with a copper plate. It's, it's titanium, blue anodized titanium. Blue titanium, yep, anodized titanium. Hand bent clip with stainless screws. And uh, at one point in time we used tie screws, but they were real expensive. Yeah. And I don't think these are tie. And the dots never come off, and I wear this thing a lot. This is what I actually still utilize most days. Most of the time this is what I carry. It's a single magnet, and it's our old magnets before we moved up to the even more powerful magnet. And I use it on a Glock mag all the time, and that's just what I like. Um, it's a great name. It's great. Yep. Really well built. Good job, Greg. Thanks. Yeah. Um, wallet. Man, I've gone through so many wallets in the last I two know. years. I, so this is probably the one I've used the longest. Now, this is an Exter, and this is the carbon fiber one. That's just beautiful. Now you tried one. I'm a carbon fiber. Before that was the same brand, right? Yeah, I had one that folded. 
Yeah. It was a bifold, but also it's what I love about this is it does that. And there's a bunch of wallets that do this now. I honestly don't know who the first one to do it is, but this is a fantastic wallet. It's super slim and thin. Mm -hmm. Six, so you really have seven cards. I got one in the in the front here, uh, my giant eagle card. So, wow, this is really all I need. Yeah, it's I keep it in my front pocket. It's super durable. It's got some scratching on here from my knife digging into it. But I'm surprised you haven't lasered it yet. I think I did the last one, and eh, I just haven't done it. <laughs> but great. This is a uh, special. No, it's not. It's an Alit, by the way. So. I bought this because I saw on like the Google feed thing, they had this wallet and it had a pin and it had some nail clippers in it. And one of the freakish things that you may not know about me is my nails grow at weirdly different rates and they're always long because I can't seem to cut them uh, soon enough. And so I wanted some nail clippers with me. Well, as it turns out, Google lied and the nail clippers don't fit into this thing, but they do have a pin. I just have never bought it. It's got a spot for it. I like this because it's leather-ish. You can put cards in it. You can put money in it. And it's not super thick. Just a typical... Man wallet. Man wallet. Yep. But it was supposed to be a cool wallet. I just never got around to making it a cool wallet. Um, what do you got next? I got earbuds. I think you carry some earbuds too. I have, yeah, I have AirPods. These yeah. are the Google Pixel Pods. They're not the pro new ones. I want some of those. Honestly, don't recommend them. I did at first because there was nothing better for me, but they disconnect all the time and I end up hanging at people, so don't buy these. I love my AirPods. I would, I I would, would, actually, I would actually, so I was visiting my brother in Salt Lake City a couple Christmases ago and I thought I lost them. I, without thinking, started going out to the car to go to a store and buy another pair. That is how much pair. I love having AirPods. I didn't have them in my, I didn't really consider them as part of my EDC, but really. I do love are. these. Yeah. I love having these. But I have to say my experience with them has been less than perfect. But the Google customer service is amazing. And technically this is my fourth pair of these that I've paid for once. Because I dropped them in a lake once, retrieved them, they replaced them. I dropped them in a river once, <laughs> they retrieved them, they replaced them. And then uh, the other ones just pooped out. So. They haven't lasted very long. I hear the pros are much better, so I'll probably upgrade to that soon. And then I have keys. You get keys, but you yeah, don't have them I with you. I agree. One thing I like about my keys is I have patches on them. I don't like to show my keys off, like people to take pictures of them and stuff, so the patches kind of cover the keys. I can carry a few here, and then I have like a car key. Everyone has that. The fob. I'll never go back to a car that doesn't have a fob, though. Just walking up to oh, your yeah. vehicle and like grabbing the doorknob door. and the yeah. vehicle's like, yes, I know you. <laughs> it's very satisfying. It's the best. And what do you got? Um, grab some medical here. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be straight, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I'm gonna admit something. <gasps> I don't carry medical every day. On Man, my person. You're gonna get killed in the streets. I do have medical with me every day, whether it's in my EDC bag, in my car, here at work. I'm surrounded by medical at all times, but um, I got this. This is from Riker Nylon yeah. Ankle Rig. I've had this for a very long time, and I love this thing. So I have some chest seals in the inside here. These are brand new. I just replaced them. I've got a cat tourniquet, shears, clotting gauze, gloves. I mean, everything that you're going to need. That's cool. Pretty much. You have carried that several times. Oh, I carried it. I remember. So when I get when I wear pants that that the leg is big enough to fit over this, I wear it. Yeah. It just hands down. It's it sits in my in my nightstand, and I grab it. Now during the summer, I take this off and I slide it in my in my daily carry bag, so I still have it. Yeah. Nearby. I actually wrote a blog about kind of converting from uh, winter to summer carry this spring. And one of the things I talked about in that is trying to figure out a good way to carry medical in the summer. Uh, we do recommend, and we usually carry, I think right now we're out of stock, the uh, Live the Creed yeah. Pocket Trauma Kit. Very cool. And mine pretty much lives in my bike backpack. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it is a option for... I don't have one of those. Bikes. I've thought about getting one. I have the Live the Creed tactical like butt pack for my yeah. battle belt. Yeah, battle and belt. I like it. I've yeah. opened it up a few times. 
I carry medical in my car. You know, it might not do me the best good, but it's not like, I don't just carry a trauma kit in my car. I have like band-aids and neck collars and things that you might need for a car accident, which is far more likely than, you know, getting shot in the streets. So I do have chest seals and all that stuff in there, yeah. but that, I just don't think um, with my lifestyle that carrying one on my person is necessarily mandatory. I do happen to take medical with me whenever I go to concerts mm. or like big venues. Yeah. Cause it's going to take me more than 20 minutes. It's going to depend on where I go. So yeah. if I go, so we, we just went to the County fair. Great example. example. Like a few weeks ago, lots of, lots of people there. There's rides that are all death traps. Uh, there's, True that. there's a lot of hillbillies there. Who knows what Bunch of pocket knives, what could happen. Yeah. So it, it's something like that, like very populated, yeah. Areas I'm more likely to, to carry this. People are going to mention that you're much more likely to need medical than a firearm, so I get that. Yep. Uh, and we have it within like a few steps. But we'll see. Yep. Cool. So, well, there you go. Hope you learned something from this. Let us know what do you carry and what do you think of this carry? Love to hear it. I would like to hear it too. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We just whiteboarded, well, te blackboarded technically, a bunch of, oh no, we whiteboarded. We whiteboarded a bunch of stuff uh, for the future for this channel. Yeah, we got some fun. And I think you're gonna like it. It's a little different yeah, because- we're gonna, we're, gonna be leaving, we're gonna be leaving this room. That's go amazing. Go and do some. I don't even know what it's like outside this room anymore. <laughs> Been in here for ages. Yeah. I mean, it's nice. Yeah, AC is okay. It'd be nice to get outside. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure, again, like you said, hit the subscribe, hit the bell thingy. Share this with somebody who you think would enjoy this content. Let us know down below what you would like to hear us go on about, or maybe even drink. Yeah, do you guys have any of these glasses? And if so, what do you think of them? So I'd like to know. Yep. Okay. All right, guys, we will see you next time. We won't see them. They'll see us. You'll see us next, next time. time. <laughs> Ciao.